Welcome to part 2 of Marvelous Dress Tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll cover sculpting, retopology, and texture baking. To set up the sculpting environment, first import the body into ZBrush and apply it to the scene. This is so when we activate symmetry on the brush tool, it will be mirrored according to the figure. Now import the dress and reselect the body tool and append the dress as a hub tool. Notice that the dress is asymmetrical, meaning the left and the right side do not match up. This will negatively impact your symmetrical sculpt inside ZBrush. This is the very reason why we append the dress to the body and not the other way around. The body mesh inside ZBrush will also become our reference. So when we subdivide the dress, we can immediately notice areas that penetrate into the body and fix it. There's nothing particularly special with my ZBrush workflow. Just work from the lower to higher subdivision while smoothing and adding detail. Let's fast forward to the final scope. So here, we have the dress at high subdivision level with all the detailing complete. I have even poly painted this model, but this is completely optional. Now, Let's begin to export the dress in two OBJ files, one for projection and the other for retopology. First, it's best to delete the UVs to speed up the export and make sure group and texture is turned off. Then export this high poly model for the purpose of texture projection. Grouping will cause the dress to undesirably fragment into separate pieces. We also do not need to have the UVs because we will retopologize the mesh anyway. And we certainly won't need any textures because we will generate those later down the line. Let's take the subdivision down to somewhere in the middle of 3 and export another OBJ file for retopology inside Maya. Now that I have the medium resolution OBJ inside Maya ready for retopology. As you can see, this mesh is quite dense, but we only use it as a guide. Inside Maya, I can make this object into a live surface, which means anything I move will stick to its surface. This is perfect combined with Maya's modeling toolkit where I can use the quad draw tool. I simply use this tool to plot out some points and fill those points in with faces. Every retopology tool out there, regardless of software, should have functionalities similar to this. The theory is all the same. Just make sure the retopologized mesh resembles your high poly model. Now, skip to where the retopology is complete. On the left, we have the ZBrush output model, which is too dense. In the middle, we have the Marvelous Designer model, which is not bad. However, it does have triangulations in strange places, and the mesh density is not really optimized. And on the right is a retopologized model with very nice edge flow and mesh density. Comparing the UVs, you will notice that the retopologized model is more economical with the UV spacing. You must also take some points into consideration to judge if it's worth the extra time to go through this process. Or you can simply use whatever is outputted from a marvelous designer. Now, let's go ahead and export this as another OBJ file, this time as a final base mesh for the dress. Another consideration is if the mesh will need manual weight painting. If so, then retopologizing will save you a lot of headache during that process. Now, let's start by baking some texture maps. We do this by loading in the high poly and low poly meshes. We can now do a test render of the normal map projection. 
I like to use X normal because one, it's free and that's always a plus. Two, the baking in this tool is really accurate. Three, it has a ton of baking options. And lastly, it is really, really light and doesn't eat up all of your RAM. So now that my dress has passed the normal map test, let's go ahead and adjust some settings. Size to 2048, turn on normal map, ambient occlusion and ambient map. And use bake high polys, vertex color is completely optional if you want to bake the poly paint as well. Let's go over some of the final texture maps created and edited inside Photoshop. In the first layer, I just have the UV layout on top for reference. For the diffuse, I tried out a few color combinations before I settled with black and red. Next is the normals, which I took what was baked out of X normal and added some finer details. I used the overlay mode to preserve the normals detail. Next is the specular, which is partitioned according to the diffuse map. This is the opacity map, which basically gives the frills a laced look. And finally, we have the physics map. Dark areas with the least influence and white areas with the strongest influence. Keep in mind that dark areas also mean stronger bone skin weights. The physics maps can take time to get used to and may need testing and fixing repeatedly to get right. Now let's have a preview of what all this looks like when it's put together inside Maya. Putting together a preview inside a third party application will give you a good idea of the final result in iClone. That concludes part 2 of the Marvelous Stress tutorial. Please stay tuned for the next part where we'll go into details of rigging and bringing the stress into iClone through Character Creator.